Omicron is mild, then why are we seeing few deaths? I mean, there are few and far between, but they are there. Hospitalizations, very few, but they are definitely there. I had made the confident prediction that there will be no third wave because of Omicron. And this has caused turmoil in two different type of groups. First group is really unique, means they are exceptional people. They want me to be wrong. They won't even be allowed on Noah's Ark. They are like that, that egregious. The second group is a people of doctors, some doctors and scientists whom I respect. They think that they don't want me to be wrong. They are nice people. They think I am wrong because they think my data is wrong. And that's why my conclusions are wrong. I will respectfully listen to them, but then point out with unflinching, unshakable faith in my own predictions that I had predicted it correctly in September 2021 that there will be no Delta third wave. Likewise, I am saying there will be no Omicron wave and I would be right. I am confident. Just take it to the bank. Now, why? Because we may see cases, hundreds of thousands, we may see millions of cases. Cases don't make waves. Hospitalizations do. We are seeing few hospitalizations. One swallow doesn't make a summer. Few hospitalizations are not going to make a wave. But why are we seeing hospitalizations? Let's consider that. There's a rumor circulating that one 40-year-old doctor apparently was vaccinated and might have died due to Omicron. It's not verified. Even if it's one death, of course, it's terrible for the family and all that. But this is rare, exceptional, and that's why it is newsworthy. I can give you the names of 168,000 people who had Omicron and they are safe. So this is rare. That's why this is an outlier. Second thing is when we say that the Omicron seriousness is exceptionally low, it's not 0%. There are going to be few cases and also there is differentiation between vaccinated and unvaccinated. Apparently, there is some data coming out of Mumbai, which I haven't really examined minutely yet, that the people who are getting into serious trouble or having adverse outcomes, 94% of them are unvaccinated. India has a large swath still of unvaccinated or partially vaccinated people. My hope and my prediction is that those people will also be safe because they had suffered Delta to some extent during the second wave. But there is this differentiation and it's not zero. There are some people who are severely immunocompromised, some people in whom vaccines are not going to work. Some people have some diseases that we still don't know about. Some people have comorbidities, other comorbidities that will be confounding illness. And so some of, very few, but some of them are going to die. <clears throat> Another way of looking at it is the case positivity. Suppose it's 25% in Delhi. Is it really 25%? If we do 1000 samples and 250 are positive, we say it's 25% positivity. But what about 100, 200, 300,000 people? Some of them are mildly symptomatic. Some of them are completely asymptomatic. If we test them all, the positivity rate will go through the roof. It might be 60, 70, 80 percent. So if a patient comes to the hospital and he has an 80 percent chance of being positive for Omicron and we test him and he tests positive for Omicron, he could die from something else, but it might still be adjudged as a Omicron death. And India has a vast population, 135 crore. Were people not dying in India before? It's a huge country. Just look at the statistics. There are supposed to be about 5,000 cases of cardiac issues per day. Are some of them not going to die? I mean, that was happening before. For the news media, I'll give you a permanent headline. 200 kids die because of dehydration in India daily. Take this as a permanent headline. If you can't find any other news, you can put it. 200 kids died today due to dehydration. It's sad. It's sorry. We need to do something about it. But it's there. It's just, just statistically there. Now look at it in a different way. A huge data came out of California. 69,279 people. 
about 52,000 of them were Omicron. You know how many of them ended up on ventilator? Zero. Zero out of 52,000. This is spectacular. But still, one person died. 14 people died in the Delta group, but one person died in the Omicron group. So there are going to be very few and because of a sheer number, we are going to see those. Another spin on this statistical, I mean, they say like politicians use statistics like a drunk uses a lamppost more for support than for elimination. So people can use this number to twist anything. But one number is, Suppose ICMR seems to be listening to our videos. They took a, they take two, three months or a couple of weeks to implement them. But now they have stopped asymptomatic testing, which is an excellent step. We could have done it months ago. I am recommending mix and match boosters. They are likely not going to accept it. Forget that. Let's just assume we are going to give a Covishield booster. Let's take any city, like say Lucknow. And my suggestion is, don't do co, win, app, this, that, Aadhaar card, nothing. Just open a stadium in Lucknow, bring all the people there, people with two doses of Covishield, whatever booster they are getting. Keep giving the boosters till you run out of people or you run out of vaccines. Once you give the shot, give them a QR code, they do their own paperwork. Finish entire Lucknow. Suppose we keep 1000 booths and keep three stadiums open and we finish entire city of Lucknow in one day. How many bicycle accidents Lucknow has daily? Do you know? Probably 15. If we finish the entire boosting of population of Lucknow, you know what the headlines are going to be next day or the WhatsApp circulation? I took the booster yesterday and I fell off my bicycle. That has nothing to do with the booster. That would have happened anyway because of chance, because we have such a big population. So we have to look at, we have to look at that too. So are we going to just meekly accept that few people are going to die because of Omicron? Can we not do something about it? That's just inevitable. But there are some things that we could do. It's now apparently... The authorities are working on increasing the bed capacities and increasing the oxygen bed. These are very laudable efforts. But the effort should be focused about not putting any warm bodies in those beds. Keep the beds ready, but make sure that they are empty. Do something. What can be done? Now, most of it is Omicron. Some of it is Delta. We can't really effectively use the current monoclonal antibodies available in India because they are not that effective against Omicron. But Sotrovimab works against both Delta and Omicron. Then you don't even have to spend time on genome sequencing. Paxlovid work against uh, both Omicron and Delta. There's a New, Eng New England Journal study about Remdesivir, if used early. So try and do something like that. Focus on high-risk people. Means don't build kid ICU and take your own selfies in front of them. Try and bring Paxlovid and Sotrovimab to India. Then you would have done something. So focus all your resources, all your energy on high-risk people. And then we would have got it made. I am extremely confident. There are going to be a lot of cases, but no hospitalization. This is all going to fizzle out in two to three weeks. And the people who are sort of opposing me and saying that this is not right. I have two questions for them. One, what was your prediction for September 2021? And my second observation about their protestation is what Shakespeare said in Hamlet, methinks the lady doth protest too much, Dr. Ravi Godsey.